Part 2 Self-Discipline in Business, Sales, and Finances In this part you will learn how to develop the discipline necessary to join the top 10% of people in your field. You'll learn how to increase your productivity, performance, output, and results. You'll learn how to become one of the most respected and esteemed people in your organization and your industry. Chapter 8 Self-Discipline and Work Vince Lombardi said, Leaders aren't born, they are made. And they are made just like anything else through hard work. And that's the price we'll have to pay to achieve that goal or any goal. There is perhaps no area of your life where self-discipline has a greater impact on your future than in your work. Yet, if you're like most people from the time you start in the morning and then continuing throughout the day, you are surrounded by people and events that draw you away from doing the things that are most important. However, it is through doing your most important tasks that you move onward and upward, quickly and dependably in your career. A group of senior executives was asked, what are the most important qualities that a person would need to be promoted in your company? Of these executives, 85% agreed that the most important qualities are 1. The ability to set priorities and work on high-value tasks and 2. The discipline to get the job done quickly and well. It seems that these two qualities are more helpful for career success than anything else a person could do. Diligent, disciplined, focused work will enable you to get consistently and predictably more done, get paid more, and get promoted faster throughout your career than the average person. Separate the relevant from the irrelevant. I've mentioned the Pareto Principle, the 80-20 rule, several times in this book, and it applies again here. Fully 80% of the value of what you accomplish will come from 20% of the things you do. Your job, then, is to identify those top 20% of your tasks and then concentrate single-mindedly on doing them quickly and well. Chapter 13 discusses time management in detail, but for now, let's take a look at the flip side of good time management, poor time management. According to Robert Half International, the average employee wastes about 50% of his or her time on non-work related activities. 37% of work time is wasted on idle conversation on personal subjects with co-workers, conversations that have nothing whatever to do with the job at hand. The other 13% of wasted time is consumed by coming in late or leaving early, by long lunches and coffee breaks, by surfing the internet, reading the newspaper, or conducting personal business during the day. Even worse, when people who waste a lot of time actually settle down and get to work, they spend too much time on low-value tasks and activities. As a result, they get very little done, which then causes them to feel that they are under continual pressure to get caught up. Unfortunately, when you waste time at work, your work does not go away. It continually builds like an avalanche overhang. Deadlines come closer and closer. Stress mounts up until you finally force yourself to do the job, usually at the last minute, and then you often make expensive mistakes. Develop an excellent reputation. There is nothing that will bring you to the attention of people who can help you faster than for you to develop a reputation for hard, disciplined work every hour of every day. Average employees increase their income at only about 3% per year, which is just about the rate of inflation or cost of living increases. In other words, if you're an average employee, you're not really making any more money from year to year. Rather, you're just keeping up with your expenses. But the top 20% in most fields increase their income anywhere from 10 to 25% per year, which is also compounded year after year. The top 20% of people at work earn 80% of the money. The bottom 80% of employees have no choice but to share the 20% of the money that is left over. They must scramble for the crumbs that fall off the tables of the highly productive people in their fields. You can double your income. When I say to people in my seminars that you should set a goal to double your income in the months and years ahead, people react in different ways. Often at the break someone will come up to me and say, you don't understand my company. There's no way that I could double my income at my current company. They simply would not pay me that amount of money. Having heard this before, I then asked them the critical question. 
Is there anyone at your company who earns twice as much as you do? The person that I'm talking to will always agree that, yes, there are people in my company who earn two or three times as much as I do. I then make the key point. So your company is quite willing to pay some people twice as much as they pay you. They're just not willing to pay you twice as much. Why is that? Then suddenly the light goes on. The individual realizes that it is not the company that is not willing to pay the money. It is the individual who is not contributing enough to be worth that additional money. The responsibility is his, not the company's. The Law of Three helps you to prioritize. When we coach entrepreneurs, executives, and business owners, we take them through an exercise that is designed to help them double their productivity, performance, and output within 12 months, sometimes even within 30 days. It's simple. Here's how it works. First, make a list of all the things that you do in a week or a month from the time you start work on Monday morning through to the end of the week. Write down everything, both small and large, including checking your email and returning phone calls. Then review this list and ask this key question. If I could only do one thing on this list, all day long, which one task or activity contributes the most value to my company? As you go over your list, the correct answer will probably jump out at you. Whatever it is, put a circle around it. Then ask the second question. If I could only do two things on this list all day long, which would be the second task or activity? Review your list again and identify your second most important task in terms of contribution to your company. Finally, ask the question once more. If I could only do three things on this list all day long, what would be the third item? We call this the Law of Three. The Law of Three says that there are three primary things that you do that contribute 90% or more of your value to your company or organization. Your job is to identify those three critical tasks and then discipline yourself to do them all day long. All of your other minor tasks will be support tasks, complementary tasks, enjoyable tasks, or useless tasks. They will be little things that you've gotten into the habit of doing as a way of unconsciously avoiding the big, difficult, important tasks that can make a tremendous difference in your work and career. Calculate your hourly rate. Another way for you to double your income is for you to use the hourly rate method of calculating your personal value and your time allocation. First, determine the amount that you earn each hour. You do this by dividing your annual income by the number 2000, which is roughly the number of hours that an entrepreneur or executive works each year in our society. 40 hours a week times 50 weeks a year. For example, if you earn $50,000 a year divided by 2000, your hourly rate would be $25. If you earn $100,000 per year divided by 2000, your hourly rate would be $50. Whatever it is from that moment onward, resolve to do only those things that pay you your hourly rate or better. Refuse to do those things that someone else can do at a lower hourly rate than you. Do not waste your time doing things of low value or no value while your other important tasks are building up. Get on the same page about what work is most important. Once you have made a list of all the results you feel you have been hired to accomplish and you have determined your three most important things that you do to justify your hourly rate, take your list of key activities to your boss and have your boss organize your job based on his or her priorities. You need to do this because you must be sure. Benjamin Trigo, co-founder of the Kepner Trigo consulting firm and author of The Rational Manager, once said, The very worst use of time is to do very well what need not be done at all. Yet it is amazing how many people are working hard on tasks that are of little or no value to their bosses. No matter how well you do an unimportant task, it doesn't help you. Even worse, Working on low-value tasks keep you from working on the most important things you could be doing. Hard work on the wrong job can actually sabotage your career. The happiest days you will have at work will be when you are working on those tasks that your boss considers to be the most important. The unhappiest days at work will be when you and your boss are at cross-purposes and not getting along primarily because you are not completing the jobs that are most important to him and to his career. Your goal is to be paid more and promoted faster. 
Your goal is to become one of the most valuable and highest paid people in your field. Your job is first to make yourself valuable and then to make yourself indispensable to your company. This requires first and foremost that you are always working on those tasks your boss considers most important. Work all the time you work. The key to doubling your productivity and output and eventually your income is to really work all the time you're at work. Simply put, when you work, work. Don't waste time. Don't delay. Don't chat with co-workers or sit around drinking coffee. Don't read the newspaper or surf the internet. When you come into work in the morning, put your head down and then work all day long. The biggest time wasters in the world of work are other people who want to talk with you, distract you, delay you, and take up the time that you should be spending on high-value tasks. When a time waster approaches you and says, Do you have a minute to talk? You reply by saying, Yes, but not now. Why don't we talk at lunchtime or after work? In the meantime, I have to get this job finished. I have to get back to work. When you tell people that you are under the gun, that you have to get a task finished for your boss, they will usually leave you alone. If you do this often enough, they will develop the habit of leaving you alone and instead find someone else with whom to waste time. Keep yourself motivated and focused by talking to yourself in a positive way. Your mantra from now on should be, back to work, back to work, back to work. Whenever you find yourself slowing down on a major task, begin repeating to yourself those magic words, back to work. Who works hardest? The secret survey. Imagine that an outside company is going to do a study of all the people who work in your organization. They're going to give each person a list of all the employees and ask them to rate their fellow employees in terms of who works the hardest, the second hardest, and so on. They're then going to give this list of people organized from the hardest worker down to the laziest to your superiors. This list is going to be used to determine who gets paid more and promoted faster than others. Now, imagine that this survey is already being taken but in secret. The fact is, in any organization, Everyone knows who works harder than anyone else. Everyone knows who works less and who does not pull their weight. Everyone knows. It's not a secret at all. Resolve today that if a survey like this were to be taken one year from today, you would win the contest. Resolve today that you are going to develop the reputation for being the hardest working person in your business. This will do more to help you than almost anything else. When you are surrounded by time-wasting people in situations, it takes tremendous self-discipline to work all the time you're at work. You must constantly fight against distractions and interruptions so that you can get back to work. The Success Formula When I began my career working for a large company, I was the low man on the totem pole. Everyone had been there longer than me and was ahead of me in the company pecking order. Even though I was in my early thirties, I still had no idea how to play the game or what to do to get ahead in the cutthroat corporate competition that existed. Somewhat by accident, I stumbled onto the formula that made me successful. It was very simple. Whenever my boss gave me something to do, I did it immediately. Like a dog chasing after a thrown stick, I would immediately throw myself at the task, complete it, and hurry back to my boss with the finished job. Initially, he would smile and say something like, I didn't really need it done that quickly, but thank you for getting it done. When I was caught up with my work, instead of relaxing, I would go to my boss and say, I'm all caught up. I want more work to do. I want more responsibility. These words became my mantra. I want more responsibility. Again, my boss, who was preoccupied with an enormous number of projects, would say something like, OK, leave it with me. I'll think about what else I can give you to do. Every day, like a broken record, I would go to my boss at the end of the day and say, I'm all caught up. I would like more responsibility. Bit by bit he began to toss me sticks. He would give me a little task to do to keep me busy. Whatever it was, I would go out immediately, complete the task, and bring him the results. I would then say, I'm all caught up. I want more responsibility. Within six months, he began to see me as the go-to guy. Whenever he had something he needed done quickly, he passed by everyone else and gave it to me. He knew that whatever he asked me to do, I would do it quickly. Once, my boss asked me to fly to Reno to begin development work on a property that the company was purchasing. He told me I could go sometime in the next couple of weeks. 
Instead, I left the next morning. I went straight to the lawyer who was handling the transaction and then to the engineer who was in charge of the development work. I immediately sensed that something was seriously wrong with this land purchase. I didn't know what it was, but I went from person to person asking questions and gathering information. By the end of the day, just a few hours before this $2 million transaction was set to close and the money would change hands forever, I found that we were about to be sold a piece of land that had no water and was therefore undevelopable. Because of complex laws and limited riparian rights, water rights, the property was a worthless piece of ground that could not be developed within the next hundred years. If we had proceeded with the purchase, we would have lost $2 million. I immediately stopped the transaction, demanded that the lawyer cut me a certified check for the $250,000 deposit that was in his trust account, and flew home to my boss to tell him the story. As you can imagine, my boss was very happy with what I had done. From that day forward, I received more and more responsibilities. Within another year, I was running three divisions of the company and had a staff of 42 people in three cities. I later learned that my boss paid me more money than anyone else who ever worked for him, and he did so all on the basis of results and profitability. This is why whenever people ask me how to succeed in business by really trying, I give them the same advice. Whatever your boss gives you to do, do it quickly and well. Then go and ask for more responsibility. And when you get it, do the job quickly and well until you get a reputation for being the person who does things fast. This will help you advance in your career more than any other reputation you could develop. Pay the price. Here is a simple three-part formula for success at work. Come in a little earlier, work a little harder, and stay a little later. This will move you so far ahead of your competitors that they will never catch up. Come in to work one hour earlier, before anyone else arrives. Use that time to plan and organize your day, and get started on your most important tasks. Make sure that whatever time your boss comes to work, you are always there working before he arrives. Second, work a little harder. Don't waste time. Don't chat with co-workers. Work through lunchtime so that you can get on top and stay on top of your main tasks and responsibilities. Third, work one hour later than your co-workers. If they leave at five o'clock, you leave at six. Use that extra time to complete your important tasks and get yourself organized for the following day. When you come in one hour earlier, work through lunch, and work one hour later, you add three full productive hours to your day. Because there are no interruptions when you work during these time periods, you'll actually accomplish two or three times as much as you would during your other work hours when you're constantly interrupted by other people and telephone calls. In fact, you can double or even triple your productivity, performance, and output by simply adding these three hours to your workday. The good news is that by coming in earlier and leaving later, you don't lose anything. You merely avoid the traffic tie-ups and slowdowns that most people suffer through on their ways to and from work. The 40 plus formula. To succeed faster at work, use the 40 plus formula. This formula says that you can tell where you're going to be five years from now by looking at the number of hours that you put in today in excess of 40 hours per week. If all you do is put in the regular 40 hours that everyone else puts in, all you will do is survive. Your annual increases will be 3 or 4 percent. You will have a job, but your income increases will go up at the same rate as everyone else. It is when you begin to put in more than 40 hours that you give yourself an advantage over most of the other people in your company and your business. Make it a habit to do more than what you are paid for. Discipline yourself to put in more than you take out. Every hour that you work over 40 hours a week is an investment in your future success. The highest paid people in America in every field work 50 to 60 hours per week. The average self-made millionaire works 59 hours per week. This is equal to 5 12-hour days or 6 10-hour days. Most successful people at the beginning of their careers worked 6 days a week, sometimes 7. Moreover, they worked all the time they were at work. They didn't waste time. They realized that in order to reap a great harvest later in their career, they had to sow a lot of seeds in the springtime of their career. Look the part. Dress for success. 
Finally, to succeed at work, you need to discipline yourself to look the part. Remember, birds of a feather flock together. When it comes to a presentation, this means that people like to promote others who look like them. Your bosses are very sensitive to the appearance of their staff. They like to promote people who they are proud to introduce to their friends and colleagues. Be sure that you dress and groom in such a way that your boss would be proud to take you out for lunch and introduce you to others as a representative of his or her company. Each morning before you go to work, look in the mirror and ask yourself, do I look like one of the top people in my field? If you don't, go back and change, and keep changing until you look like one of the top people in your business. Learn how to dress for success. Read books and articles, or ask others for advice. Look at the most successful people in your business and dress the way they do. Dress for the job two levels above your current job. Remember that fully 95% of the first impression you make on other people will be determined by your dress and grooming. Make sure that that first impression and then the second and third impressions are consistent with the message you want to send. Many people work their entire lives without realizing that by putting forward a little extra effort, working a little harder, and focusing on higher value tasks, they could become one of the most valuable people in their organizations. When you discipline yourself to continually increase the value of your contribution to your company, you'll put your career on the fast track and virtually guarantee yourself a wonderful future. In the next chapter, you will learn that your work behaviors naturally determine your ascension to leadership, and you will see how self-discipline is essential to fulfilling your potential as a leader. Now here are some action exercises for you. Number one, make a decision today that you're going to become one of the top 20% of people in your company and your industry. What should you or could you do differently to achieve that goal? Two, make a list of everything you do in your job and then identify the three things that contribute the greatest value to your work and your company. Three, Set a new work schedule for yourself and begin to start earlier, work harder, and stay later until it becomes a habit. 4. Identify the most important results you are expected to achieve in your job and then work on those results all day long. 5. Determine the person who is the best dressed and groomed in your company and then resolve to use him or her as a role model for your own appearance. 6. Decide today that from now on you are going to actually work all the time you are at work and that you are going to develop the reputation for being the hardest working person in your company. And seven, develop a sense of urgency. Resolve to move fast when you are given a job or opportunity. This can change your life.